All I want to do is stare at the object in front of me. Adam Savage at Prop Store with Brandon Ellinger. Hello. Hello. Um, we are looking at a piece here that I, I think you didn't even think existed. This is a new discovery for us. This is true Star Wars history, holy grail relic stuff. This is genuine X-Wing fighter model from the very first Star Wars made at ILM in Van Nuys in late 76, early 77. And uh, what a thing. I mean, what a thing. What a preserved relic. Uh, look at it. It's beautiful. It's an insane shape. The idea that none of the four radar dishes are cracked is mind-blowing, especially since I can see the mold parting line, that this is a casting. Yeah. So this was, uh, per, you know, made made for production. Did you say off camera that this was a pyro? Yeah, this is a pyro model, meaning it's all cast out of that very lightweight, rigid foam, mm -hmm. and there's no armature in it, there's no oh. lights in it, and designed to hang on wires, there's actually tiny little holes in the top of the body here where maybe oh, they had that. eye yes, hooks or something. Yes. And, uh, and, and basically pyro meaning designed for explosions, right? And we went through a big research process with this one. It took a while to figure it out because obviously it's, it's marked as red three, three yep. stripes on the wings. Red three is Biggs. When you look at Biggs in the film, he blows up big and it's definitely not this model. And whatever it is, it's not around anymore because it blows up right, big. Right, right. But we found, a, we found a, first we found a workshop photo of this as Red 3 and photo matched every detail of it, all the airbrush, everything, this exact thing it, at ILM in 1977. And then we slowly sort of worked out that this had started life as another ship and become Red 3. So it was actually Red Leader originally with a single red stripe on the wings. And then they, the, the, the pyro shot for Red Leader, the explosive shot, they just sort of set a charge off the back of it and it didn't disrupt the model. Okay. And then Red Leader went down and crashed into the Death Star surface. So since it didn't disrupt the model, they redressed it as, as Biggs, as Red 3, considered using it for that. I don't think it was ever shot at all as Red 3, but it was distinctly shot as Red Leader, which is Red 1, single stripe on the wings. You can screen match it and there's numerous behind the scenes photographs. There's a great photo of Lauren Peterson in front of a blue screen standing and you could match up every little scratch and airbrush mark on the top of it. It's, I mean, it's a hell of a thing, you know? It's, Amazing. Yeah. It is, the fact that it's cast in lightweight foam and still has not drooped, draped, uh, started to distort. No, it's pre it's pretty good. I mean, maybe a little bit on the cannons here. Nope. And it's, it's also interesting, you know, you were talking about the cannons being cast, but some of it, like the, the tip assembly is scratch built. Yeah. And the wings are cast, but then there's some detailing in the back that like that little rod there that looks like it's been oh, inserted. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, maybe even to straighten it out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so they have gone in and done additional work. And, you know, I love all the very subtle airbrushing and the decals, which you see on some of the hero models as well. Maybe this was painted by Joe Johnston. I know he did a lot of paint work on the models, so I'll he tell may you, have worked on it. I wouldn't be surprised, and I want to point out some of the aspects of the paint job that are really pretty remarkable, because Star Wars painters, modelers like me, you know, there are some basic colors, your reefer white and your, your, your you know, your color palette. And this subverts the color palette in some really lovely ways, like this very deep blue mm. on the on the cannons that's been made very subtle by a white overwash. Uh, the the blue, the same blue here, but this purple front. Mm -hmm. This is like a purple wash. That is a fascinating color choice. And that's something they added when they changed it to red three. So they did a little bit of extra paint work, I guess just to differentiate it between red one. There's a gray panel here. Mm -hmm. You don't see that in the red one photos. You see it after it became red three. And 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 just to talk about that conversion a little bit more, look at this wing. Yeah. Look at the difference in that stripe and those two stripes. Yes. You see the color tone? And and just how oh yeah those one was like brushed with, on yeah. and one was oh One's so masked. that's clearly the red leader first one because it's right. airbrushed exactly. and the other two are brushed on and At a masked different time. hastily right <gasps> yeah oh that's beautiful well, that must have been so freaking exciting to figure that oh, out oh it was it was uh, unpacking that story because we found some different production photos and there's actually some paintwork inside some of the engines that matched up because at one point we were speculating well maybe it was a pyro that was blown apart and then put back together with different components. Right, so, but, right. You know, maybe it's different wings, but no, it's it's all intact as it was. And uh, it, we believe this is the only X-Wing model from the first film that still exists wow. intact in private hands. So um, I want to point out a couple of other things. The back of these guns are scratch built and it looks like there's some clear plastic there. Okay. Uh, and those are clearly, uh, you know, olive drab tank wheels. Okay. So yeah. that's a totally add on. But there's a technique here that I want to call out because I got taught this technique in my first couple of weeks at ILM. Okay. And someone came over and showed me this. And it is, it's amazing to see that it's been a technique forever. So 
it's this specific technique of these paint chips on the red panel. And what you'll notice is there's a light color that's a wide field and then a dark center to it. And this is ILM's way of communicating that there's like battle damage, but it's scraped some of the paint away around the edge of the damage. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that like the gray ends up being a primer. So it's gone through multiple layers. Yes. Yeah. But, but what's funny is, is that the exact way it's applied is the opposite. Yeah. Right? It's built up one, two, three, except that it looks like it's been pulled away three, two, one. Okay. Um, yeah. And like I said, I got taught that within the first few weeks at ILM. I think Larry Tan or John Goodson walked me through it. Uh, and I've been using that, that thing ever since. Um, if you want even more, you can do a metallic blob that you then let dry and fill with a light color like primer blob that only leaves some metallic edges and then you do a dark center and you get all of this like oh, okay. dimensionality right. and it looks like a hole to yeah. the camera. When you were working on the prequel films as a model maker, would you guys ever get out original models from George Lucas's collection to look at as reference? No. No, no, no. no. Those it? were always up at the ranch. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely treated as priceless artifacts. Uh, they did bring in, like at one point, uh, one of the big uh, pieces of a Star Destroyer got damaged and uh, they brought it in and okay. a whole bunch of model makers ended up fixing Fix, it for yeah, a few weeks. Yeah. Um, I will say uh, two things about reference. It, I would always look at old Star Wars models in some of the big books. So we had a library at the model shop and we'd pull out books that had beautiful color photographs of paint jobs and close-ups and I totally referred to that before painting anything. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was working on episode two, and it was before it came out, and George wanted a shot of the jaw, of a Jawa hanger from a distance. And CG department had done a, a little mat of one, and he didn't think it was good enough. And so I got asked if I could build it in a day and a half, and I did. And as I did these panels for the roof of it, I started painting them, and my reference was the sand crawler. I was like, okay, the roof's gotta be dark because it's a dark value against this brighter sky. I'm gonna do these rust streaks and the, my favorite rust streaks are on the sand crawler. Yeah. So I'm in the painting room and I'm airbrushing this piece and Steve Gawley comes in, one of the original seven, and he says, hey, hey, hey. Uh, and Steve had one, tech, I think I've even said this in videos, he could always put a thumb in the middle of your fresh paint job. <laughs> he just would always, well, that looks right. oh, hey, I'm really sorry, I just. <laughs> but besides that, he says, hey, that looks really great what's your reference for that weathering? And I said, it's a sand crawler. And he said, oh, I painted the sand crawler. Oh, did he? <laughs> in, in 1976, wow. yeah. Uh, the other one is, is the beginning of episode two, George actually sent a, a good portion of the art department, and I got to go on this field trip, to a classic car reseller hmm. to look at classic cars and specifically their engines for inspiration. Hmm because George came from a hot riding culture. Right, right, right. That, that informs... And it kind of shows up on screen too with all the speedsters and it stuff, really right? It really does. Yeah. Even, down to, even down to the exposed engine pieces, that is like the, hood, the, the air intake on your charger. Right, right. Like he's totally fulfilling that. Yeah, um, that's cool. The, the other main, the other thing I saw once was uh, I got to see a B-52 bomber with that clear ball turret. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever seen one of those clear ball turrets up close, it's that's responsible for like half of the aesthetics of Star Wars right. is yeah. in that yeah. one beautiful the thing. TIE fighter windows and Millennium Falcon cockpits and all that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, Norm was pointing out off camera that these um, beautiful little pips of plastic actually frequently cover the panel lines. They bridge them. And that's not a technique that I have used. Uh, and I'm yeah. definitely going to add it to my repertoire. And as if it's holding it together. It, yeah. yeah. And it's just a really interesting visual break. Kind of pops. It makes yeah. it, yeah. Um, it's important to remember, this is 1976. No one, nobody, except for Silent Running, had ever built ships this beat up and crappy mm -hmm, looking mm -hmm. for a science fiction movie. So it's like, it's easy for us to look at this and be like, oh, the paint's really great. But it's also like, I'm reminding myself, this is a groundbreaking aesthetic launch of an entire like franchise, yeah. right? And I mean, not, for me, that's part of what makes the visuals of Star Wars so successful is that used universe. Obviously, it's been talked about a lot, but it's it's just, it's so strong. And, um, and I think the X-Wing is just a particularly wonderful design. You know, they said it was inspired by the idea of like a drag racer with the yeah, long nose. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got these big wings on it and then they can open and close. I mean, it's really just brilliant. I mean, just brilliant stuff, you know? It's amazing, and it's again, look at the little blades in here in the front of the engine. The that one's actually missing. Oh, yeah. there, but you see yeah. the little. 
And so, those were glued in after the fact. Yeah. You can actually see a little bit of glue on the bottom. Added to the cast pieces. Uh, yeah. What Lauren Peterson told me was that they called the process of making stuff look like this boilerplate. Okay. Uh, and that there was no CA glue or crazy glue right. for the first Star Wars. That didn't show up until Empire. And Lauren actually got the first crazy glue from uh, Eastman Kodak. So all of this gluing is done with epoxy, with five minute epoxy. Apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, Lauren said all of Star Wars was just holding on to pieces while they dried. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is an unfathomable piece. Yeah, I, no, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful. I mean, one of the best Star Wars pieces that we've ever handled, probably one of the best Star Wars pieces in a private collection that exists. You know. <gasps> People love models. People always say, oh, you know, I'd love to get something related to models. There's actually a lot less in the way of model parts and pieces that are out there than like, say, helmets or yeah, yeah. blaster props or anything like that. Models just really scarce. And, you know, there is a TIE fighter model that's out there that was sold a number of years ago. There is a Y-wing model that's out there. Yeah. And as far as I know, this is the very first X-wing that has um, that has surfaced. And you know, this thing is what 45, 46 years old now. And <laughs> yeah. really, the condition is pretty fantastic. You know, this this casting material, this this rigid foam, has held up extremely well. It's I'm gobsmacked by yeah. what by the shape that it's in, and just the fact that you pointed out that you can clearly see that red one stripe is there, and then the red three stripes were added shows later. Shows the history of it. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the um, the stand that we have it set up on here, it's just it's just a five eighths inch diameter metal rod that runs all the way through. And when you look at photos of the making of Star Wars, they're always just putting these things on C stands, and that's basically the right. size of a C stand on right. it. So that's all they did with these pyro models. There's no armature in it. There's no threaded rod or anything. It just either slides on a pole or they hang it from fishing wire, and that's Incredible. it. What a doc! What an artifact! What yeah. a, what a history to demonstrate, man! It is really, and the first film start of it all and red leader who's a yeah, memorable yeah. x-wing and then redressed as red three who's big it's, it's like oh, it's a twofer yeah all what, right what more do you want i want to build one <laughs> of course i want to build one of everything i see here incredible all right um i'm going to keep drooling slightly away from this so i don't damage it we'll see you guys next time thanks for joining us I'm trying to see if i can find pencil line as often you can find pencil line oh really draw more panels make more detail but I love the paintwork on this I just yeah. think all this kind of airbrush the, yeah we'll talk you ready yeah. all right yeah hey everybody uh